I'm Ajit Khan. This is our very first video about Kubernetes. So, uh, in this video, we will be discussing and uh, we will be trying out setting up Kubernetes cluster on AWS using Kops. So, KOPS is a tool, Kubernetes operations, and uh, with the help of this tool, we can uh, set up Kubernetes cluster on AWS very easily. So, for this tutorial, I have created a blog post on AppyChip, which is our own blog uh, regarding setup Kubernetes cluster. So, here all the steps are listed. So, I'll walk you through the steps written over here and we'll try it out on the AWS. So, before going ahead, uh, we assume that you have a basic knowledge about Kubernetes and uh, AWS because um, COPS uses uh, COPS will create certain things uh, in AWS like auto scaling uh, route 53 domains and uh, security groups instances and other stuff so uh, we assume that you have a basic knowledge about all of, all of these and we also assume that you have a basic knowledge about Kubernetes components as well so uh, let's go ahead so basically kubernetes is an open source system for automating deployments scaling and management of your containerized applications so for example you have a containerized application and uh, you want to deploy it uh, you have it containerized and you want to deploy it on certain nodes so basically kubernetes can take care of uh, spawning those containers on different available nodes where uh, uh, wherever it is possible to run on different nodes and uh, if you want to have number of uh, number of containers for the same applications running then kubernetes can take care of that and how those containers will interact within themselves and to others and so on so basically this is what kubernetes is about that is managing the containers so let's go ahead Now there are certain prerequisites for this. Before going ahead, uh, you should have an Ubuntu instance or basically an, uh, a Linux instance or it could be your local workstation as well. Then uh, you should have AWS CLI setup and then you should have a S3 bucket. So as of now, I have already created an instance. I have named it kubectl, you can name it like anything. So basically it's an Ubuntu instance and which have security groups 8080443 and um, ssh port so i have already created this instance and then you should have aws cli setup so your aws cli should have appropriate access credentials to uh, do the required stuff so basically it should have certain access like uh, install uh, spawning an instance making entries to uh, route 53 so it should have access to route 53 it should have access to your bucket which we are going to create so basically it should have all these things so as of now uh, i have already created a role which have uh, required permission so uh, uh, as of now i have given uh, the user here Two, two permissions Amazon route 53 domain full access and administrator access so these two would be enough for this instance to create the required things so uh, you should generate your credential for the user which have at least these many access next you should have an s3 bucket so here let's go to s3 Here I have already created clusters.gates.apichip.com So uh, you can name this bucket like anything uh, This is just uh, I have given this name just like that So you can have you can name it like anything So 
right now this bucket is empty now we will install kubectl on our workstation so if you are using mac os uh, then you can install it with brew so the command would be brew install kubernetes cli so kubectl is basically kubernetes command line tool to uh, do this required stuff to create deployments uh, to get list of nodes and so on so I will be uh, installing kubectl on the instance which we have already created uh, let's go ahead and ssh into this instance Okay, so we are already here. I have already installed kubectl by this command. This will fetch the binary and then we can make it executable and then we can uh, move it to the required path. So I already have it. Let's check it out if we do have it or not. So we do have this. Next, uh, you need to install KOPS, which will be helpful to create the cluster. So, to install COPS, uh, you need to run a wget command and then uh, make it executable and then move it to required path. So, this also I have already done. Let's go ahead and check it. Oops. Okay, so we do have COPS. And also, uh, we do have uh, we do have AWS CLI installed, and uh, I have kept the required credentials in this file. So you can put your credentials here and uh, make sure that you should have the credential with the required permission. The next thing you need to have is a, a route fifty three domain. So you need to create a domain. Uh, this is a uh, must requirement for Kubernetes cluster. So, it's taking a lot of time. So here I have created a hosted zone uh, with the name appychip.vpc. This is a private uh, hosted zone attached to my default VPC so basically you can create one from here you can enter it like epichip.vpc or anything you want to and then you can make it private since this is a private one not the uh, purchased one uh, so this is how you can create it uh, after creating you will uh, get these entries and this is it uh, you have to create this much only and uh, the cops will create the required DNS entry later on. So Kubernetes uses DNS for discovery inside the cluster so that you can reach out Kubernetes API from the uh, from clients. So you you need to have it. So if you create it like uh, uh, hosted zone say it's dot vpc then the API endpoint would be like API dot dot vpc now uh, the next step would be create s3 bucket so we have already created it uh, although if you haven't you can create it with this command you can run this command from uh, here workstation uh, on now uh, one more thing you need to expose a variable kopa state store which will have the path to our bucket so uh, what this bucket would be doing is uh, this bucket will store the configuration of our kubernetes cluster so we first will uh, it will generate a configuration for the cluster and it will store it to s3 then when we will run a command to create the cluster then it will read the configuration from there and will uh, do the required stuff and will create the cluster let's see if we have 
this variable or not so we don't have this variable set up so let's export this variable okay so uh, one more thing to note here is that my bucket name is clusters.kids.apichip.com so here and here we are using clusters.kids.apichip.vpc so doesn't matter you can use either this one or you can create another one so uh, let's create another one okay so we have created another one now we will create the kubernetes cluster so the command to uh, create is cops create cluster will say the cloud name is aws and we will be uh, specifying the zone to be us east 1d and the name of our cluster would be us east 1.kids.apichip.vpc and the dns zone we are providing is apichip.vpc so this uh, zone should be present in our route 53 then uh, since our dns is private then you need to also spe specify that dns is private let's go ahead and run this okay so this has told you that what it is going to do what all things it is uh, going to create so it has listed everything internet gateway route table and vpc creation security groups instances dns zone dns entries and so on so it has listed all the things which is it is going to create so this is our bucket and uh, since we run the command to create the cluster so it has created the configurations here and by reading all these configuration it will create the stuff so as of now you can see we only have one instance and uh, in the, in the uh, hosted zone there is no dns entry other than these now we are going to create the cluster so let's go ahead and run the command cops update cluster and the cluster name with the option hyphen hyphen yes so hyphen hyphen yes is actually going to create the cluster you can read the output what all things it is doing so it is waiting for IAM instance profile so it is creating this instance and it is waiting to, to be ready it is also creating a master instance okay cluster is starting it should be ready in few minutes so we hope to see that some instance should be up and running here okay so it has started two instances which are in initializing state okay one more has come up so it is creating one master node and two uh, two nodes so see these are the nodes which are of t2 medium and this is our master node so slowly it is creating all the stuff uh, it should have created certain entries here as well yes it has created uh, sudden DNS it has also created a VPC on its own apart from VPC uh, you can also check that it also creates order scaling groups for nodes and master see this is for nodes and this is for master you can see the activity history that it is launches successful of the ac2 instance okay, 
stances are still in initializing state so if uh, you are not using a private dns then you don't need to provide this option hyphen hyphen dns private by default it takes the public dns and uh, uh, if you if you do have a purchase domain then then you can use that as well but as of now we don't we are not using uh, the official one that is epichip.com so we have created a private one and if you are using a, a public one then it's there is no problem you can simply go and create it like this only without specifying this hyphen hyphen dns private option now uh, after creating this it will list certain commands so to validate cluster you can run cops validate cluster to get list of nodes you can run kubectl get nodes and to sss to master you can run this command and so on so let's go ahead and run the cops validate cluster and see if our cluster is up to date or not Hopefully it should not because the instances are still in initializing mode. Okay, so it cannot get nodes because the instances are still in initializing mode okay so uh, we can go ahead and read certain other commands as well cops edit cluster which will uh, open the cluster configuration in edit mode so you can edit the configuration as well if you want to edit certain specific options like IG internet gateway then you can use the edit option cops edit and so on so this is how cops helps you to manage your cluster configuration out of the box so uh, basically we are waiting for our instances to be up and running okay so here is our cluster up and running so the master node is this which is of 20 medium type and the minimum number of instances should be one and max should be one this is the subnet and the nodes are of t2 medium type and the minimum number of nodes should be two and maximum is also two okay so we have validated the cluster as we have seen that you can also uh, get the uh, list of nodes with the uh, kubectl command so here is the uh, list of nodes okay so our cluster is up and running you can run kubectl get nodes as well which we recently ran with show level option and uh, now uh, you can also enable the kubernetes ui so you need to install the ui service to install it you can run this command so it will do a required it will do the required stuff and uh, to access the UI from your machine, you need to set a proxy for the port 8080 and then you can access it on your local host. So, as of now, since we are on this instance, we are not accessing the UI from here, although you can do a curl command on local host. Okay, so basically, the uh, this is not running so we need to run this 
starting to serve on localhost 8080 so you can do a curl on this okay so basically your ui can run if you are running it on uh, mac os on your local workstation then you can uh, hit this url and you can see the ui now since our cluster is up and running we can uh, deploy our containers so here for an example we will deploy nginx container so what we are going to do is we are going to uh, create a deployment for nginx so we are going to run kubernetes run and uh, container name from the image nginx and it should have two replicas and it should run on port 80 so let's go ahead and run this so it says deployment sample nginx created now you can list the pods so since we specified two replicas so pods are ready now you can run kubectl get deployments so it will say sample nginx is the deployment and desired count is 2 current count is 2 and 2 are up to date and available is also 2 and their age is 23 seconds now we will uh, expose deployment as a service this will create an elb in front of these two containers that means uh, we will expose a gateway we will expose an instance or uh, rather to, spe to be specific we will expose a load balancer in front of these containers which will accept the request and will distribute the request to these containers so we can uh, we can expose it with the kubectl command so kubectl expose deployment and the deployment name on the port 80 and type is load balancer so what it is going to do is it will create a load balancer behind the scene service sample nginx exposed now we have created is we can get the uh, name or the dns of the load balancer with this command kubectl get services so it will give you the dns the external dns to access the nginx containers uh, you can hit it from your browser so it might take some time as it is creating the load balancer and attaching those containers to it okay so we need to wait for some time to be uh, for this to be up and running uh, meanwhile we will uh, see the UI to access the uh, you can see the UI by accessing the master node IP you can hit the master nodes IP domain in your browser and it will ask you for the credentials to enter the credential you need to uh, run the kubectl config view command to list out your credentials and then you can enter those so here is our master node this is the public IP right now we have not set up the DNS so and we are not accessing and since our uh, domain is we have created it a private one so we can't access it so it is asking for username and password so you can get those credentials from this command the username is admin and the password is this here we are so this is the output which we have got by running by accessing our local host so it is the same and to access the UI this is our UI 
and it says that sample nginx which we just created is up and running uh, let's go ahead and try to hit it if it is working or not most of the time the demos doesn't work <laughs> Okay, let's see if it works or not. Fingers crossed. Hooray, it works. So here are here is our UI. So in this tutorial we have seen how to create the Kubernetes cluster using COPS on AWS, how to deploy, how to create your deployment of a sample container, how to access the UI. Hope you have learned a lot and as I say keep learning and keep sharing so do share this video you can follow along the blog post on appichip.com and last but not the least if you ever want to destroy your Kubernetes cluster then you can do it by running the command cops delete cluster and the cluster name and with the option yes so let's go ahead and actually delete this cluster so we have this instances these three instances so let's go ahead and destroy our cluster so it will delete ev each and everything which is which it has created the vpc the subnet internet gateways instances key pairs dns entries everything everything even the configuration from the s3 bucket let's go ahead and see if things are up and running no so it is terminating all those instances let's see if we do have configuration in the bucket yeah actually it has not deleted the configuration yet but yeah it has deleted now okay no it will create in some time and uh, see these entries hopefully this should be gone yeah this has gone and the vpc so vpc and bucket still there so it will delete all those things one by one it's still deleting so it is still deleting the stuff so vpc would be the last thing to be deleted because everything is inside vpc okay so uh, kubernetes cluster would be destroyed soon and uh, the thing which we have just created is destroyed so we don't have this and the uh, ui should also not work now so this is all about this tutorial hope you like it so keep us motivated subscribe and do like the video thanks for watching